So 3D printing has a really fantastic ability to make anything on demand, and yet you don't really see very many spare parts around that are 3D printed. Today we're gonna to talk about why that is and ways of getting that fixed. This video is sponsored by Angle.io. Angle.io is using mass production 3D printing to allow designers to create products that could have never existed before. Angle takes care of the production and fulfillment of products and designers receive royalties from all of the designs that are sold on the platform. In order to find out more or to purchase a product that you will not find anywhere else, go ahead and visit Angled.io. So at Slant3D, we have worked at producing spare parts ever since we got started. It's a very easy solution for 3D printing. A part has gone out of production, 3D printing can scan the part or reverse engineer the part and put it back into production. So if you have a knob from a 1940s Ford pickup, you can have it reprinted and get that car back to good as new. That's a great idea and people do it all the time at an individual level, but why has it not been adopted more broadly? There's a number of companies who work at this, but there's a couple of primary challenges within it that are slowing it down and slowing down the adoption of really mass scale spare parts creation with 3D printing. The first one is engineering. All the parts in the past century have been designed for injection molding. Injection molding is a different process from 3D printing. So you cannot simply take the existing injection molded design and throw it into a 3D printer because you'll probably be disappointed with the results. The rules are different. 3D printing can make equivalent parts for the functionality that is needed, but they cannot use it with the same design as injection molding. You have to design for the main process. So that is a slowdown. Everything back then is meant for a different kind of technology than what 3D printing is able to produce. But that's a fixable issue. Using resin 3D printing or things like MJF, you can produce most injection molded parts pretty reliably um, for the same quality and the same type of properties. So then what is the issue? Here is the issue. So several years ago, Slant 3D was pushing really hard on spare parts. And we were trying to get partnerships with like spare parts websites where we would say, okay, let us know what is no longer in stock. What is no longer produced? What are spare parts that you know people are searching for on your website, but you are not able to get a hold of anymore because the OEMs don't make them anymore. We reached out to them and they said, we cannot let you know what parts are out of stock because if we start selling third party replacement parts, the OEMs will cancel their contract with us to supply inventory for any other existing spare parts. This is what's stopping spare parts. OEMs prefer old devices to break and die so that you then have to buy a fully new device rather than repairing your existing one. So when spare parts run out, they let all of those devices decay and die. And if you are having a lawnmower ruined because a screw or a button went bad, you cannot get spare parts and you have to buy a whole new lawnmower. It's a very good business model for them. Um, and all of their spare parts suppliers cannot get out of it because they will lose the relationship if they start selling third party parts. We looked at it and we were like, okay, so everybody knows what parts are needed. These spare parts sites have people going by every day and say, this hairdryer, this lawnmower part is requested often, but the OEM will not put it back into production because they want to sell a new lawnmower. So we thought, okay, well, we'll start looking at these pieces and try to recreate third party parts. So if anybody wants to find it, they can. Here's the issue. Finding those pieces is actually fairly difficult because you do not know how much demand there is for a particular part. You can find lists of pieces that are out of stock and you can go to forums to find out, oh yeah, the 1940s Ford group wants this knob, but those are one part at a time so they don't really pay for themselves. What we wanted to do was download an entire database of spare parts and put them back into production, which can be done very easily. But if we have to do it one piece at a time, it's economically not feasible because there's too much work per part and we don't know which ones to focus on. If spare parts websites were able to tell us what things that were out of stock and no longer available people were searching for, we would be able to go down that list of demand and recreate the parts and know that there was the demand there waiting for it. 
But since the OEMs will not allow that, 3D printing cannot produce the solution. Thanks everybody for watching that video. We publish every Tuesday and Saturday, so if you're interested in this content and you wanna see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe, or just give us a comment down below of other sorts of topics that you'd like to see. Have a great day, everybody.